Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI. I'm Elaine Shane Baxter, the Director of Partnerships for Montgomery County Public Schools. With us in the studio today is Sanja Blotner and Elena Reyes. Sanja is the MCPS representative for the Latino Student Achievement Action Group, and Elena is the parent representative for the same group. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you, Thank you. for having us. So can you tell us what the student, Latino Student Achievement Action Group is and what its core mission is? So the Latino Student Achievement Action Group is an organization that works with NMCPS with the partnership unit to ensure that the superintendent and MCPS leadership can be able to engage with the Latino community and better understand what are the needs, what are the issues, what are some of the barriers that are mm -hmm. facing our community so that we can begin to address the achievement gap. This group was and has been in place for from since 2013, I believe a former superintendent kind of got it going because he valued to engage with the community. Mm -hmm. And there is also, I believe, an ASAG, so an African American group as well as an Asian group. And so this is really his way to connect with the community. And it's been an amazing group kind of getting to know many um, leaders in the community. Both, both we have community members, we've got parents, and we have staff members that work together to address the achievement gap. Mm -hmm. So I understand that these high-level action groups, they report to the chief of staff in the superintendent's office. And That's so it's a, a really important group that has the ear of uh, senior leadership. And I also understand that the chairs are a parent, an MCPS mm -hmm. staff member, and a community member who co-chair this uh, monthly meeting. That's exactly right. So how does your Latino Student Achievement Action Group actually work collaboratively with the school system? So we've worked collaboratively together in several ways. Mm -hmm. We have met with the superintendent. Um, we used to meet regularly. Um, and we've also met with MCPS leaders. So I'll think of an example of when we got together with Andrew Zuckerman at one point to talk about the diversity in the workforce plan, what that looked mm -hmm. like. I remember also the team coming together and meeting with Ben Uyang mm -hmm. as we were looking at our CTE um, or career technology education opportunities for our students. Mm -hmm. um, we've met with Dr. Statham and Dr. Um, Williams and others to talk about how things are working in schools to better support our Latino students. So we've really been mm -hmm. very collaborative in how we've engaged with both the offices as well as staff as well as the community to really better understand what's happening in our system mm -hmm. and how we can work together collaboratively to effectively address those changes that are needed. Wonderful. What are some of the issues that our Latino students or their families um, face here? Yeah, back in November of 2018, we, we really wanted to know that, and so we brought a forum together mm -hmm. where parents came and we listened. It was really mm -hmm. a listening session. A lot of MCPS leadership and staff was there. Mm -hmm. um, so we sat in circles and we asked the community this, you know, what are their biggest issues? Mm -hmm. And it's you know, they, they, the language is a big barrier. Mm -hmm. um, so MCPS doesn't have that many Spanish speakers as staff. Um, many of these parents are coming to the schools and they feel they can't communicate with the front desk staff. And sometimes they, I could even say that, or well, they reported feeling maybe not treated the same as their, you know, that as mm -hmm. the parents of, of, of other, you know, of the other students. Um, a lot of them sometimes don't understand just the system, mm -hmm. the MCPS system. They come from different school systems um, and they don't know, you know, especially as their kids go into middle school and high school, mm -hmm. that there's so many choices that their kids could be, um, there's, there are many things they could be doing while they're, school, while they're in, in MCPS school years and that when they figure out they're too late or they've kind of aged out of programs. Mm -hmm. Um, they've talked about, you know, after school programs, needing to engage, having that um, enrichment activities for their children. Mm -hmm. um, they've talked about even um, the scheduling for the middle school students and high school. Sometimes kids want to be able to participate in some, but they are placed maybe in ESOL classes or in different classes mm -hmm. that don't permit them from, achieve, you know, mm -hmm. entering other um, opportunities for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think some, and some parents even mentioned sometimes feeling that the teachers aren't trained or don't know enough about what the, the Latino families are bringing into the community mm -hmm. and just wishing that they, that um, be more culturally competent or more mm -hmm. culturally sensitive mm -hmm. to what the Latino community brings. So those are some of the issues that they brought and those are the, some of the issues that we um, have then 
moved up to the MCPS leadership and, and shown them and let them know that this is what the community is asking for. That's great. And so just to add to it, mm -hmm. I know that the power of that session mm -hmm. was that our superintendent was there mm -hmm. for the entire time and he really was there to listen, mm -hmm. hear what the community had to say. Mm -hmm. He had um, someone come from OSA so they were able to really gather the data that we gathered mm -hmm. from those listening sessions in mm -hmm. small groups, some in Spanish, some in English, mm -hmm. um, and then we're able to summarize that data and that has been very helpful as we've been looking forward to what are those other priorities that we need to bring to the surface. Mm -hmm. And just to add on to what Elena was uh, mentioning as well is we were also thinking about some of the challenges and one of our key areas of focus has been how do we make sure that we're really supporting the Latino students that are in the ESOL program and so that's been another huge area of focus mm -hmm. making sure that there are enough supports in place for the students so that they can mm -hmm. progress. We know from looking at our graduation rates that there's a lot of growth of where we need to move mm -hmm. because right now the graduation rates are about 46.6 for ESOL students mm -hmm. and we know that we can do better and so that's just been really working together talking to MCPS leadership mm -hmm. and working with the community to see what are those opportunities for us to address that challenge mm -hmm. as well. So you both shared a number of ideas that have played out from that forum in mm -hmm. um, addressing um, things that parents need help with even um, I think our school system has a Spanish Facebook yes. right yes, um, that do. helps to translate everything and even the how do you read a report card. Um, yes. Is there anything else that you guys want to add in terms of um, work that you're doing to close that achievement gap? Well, I think um, kind of in response to the forum um, that was in 2018 and so in 2019, um, we did a forum where MCPS then brought the information. 2018, MCPS listened, and so mm -hmm. in 2019, they responded to mm -hmm. it. Um, and so we had, um, we divided it into between elementary, you know, the, and, and the secondary. Mm -hmm. Um, parents and we talked about many of the things that they had asked about. Mm -hmm. You know, MCP has talked about the dual language programs, talked about access to to college education, to mm -hmm. higher education. Um, talked about we had students that came in and talked about their their experiences. Experience. Mm -hmm. um, what else did we? So I know we were also talking about dual enrollment was an option, um, and accelerated and enriched opportunities for ESOL students and how do we make sure we open those doors? What are some career mm -hmm. opportunities for right. students Expanding and how do we access exactly mm -hmm. that's right. So those were just some of the things that we were able to bring back to the families mm -hmm. in response to that listening session right. that we had um, in the fall. Wonderful. You guys are doing such mm -hmm. amazing work. Um, how can student community members, whether they're parents or even somebody watching the show, how can they get involved with your organization? We meet monthly, mm -hmm. usually the last Monday of the, of the month in the mm -hmm. evenings here at, at Carver Building. Mm -hmm. um, they are more than welcome to join. I know that online we have you know, our meeting dates and our emails are there and they can yes. feel free to reach out to us. Okay. Um, but we also encourage them to even, you know, when we do these forums, mm -hmm. feel free to attend the forums, feel free to bring information, mm -hmm. and even meet in their local um, schools, you know, mm -hmm. be active, be active parents in their kids' education. Mm -hmm. That makes a huge difference. Um, and if they can't come to the meetings, mm -hmm. I know, you know, they're in the evening and sometimes it's hard for parents to get up here, mm -hmm. but feel free to email us their concerns mm -hmm. and email us things that they would like to or issues they're having or things that they would like to see addressed mm -hmm. and we can advocate for them. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing amazing work. Um, I think anybody watching the show, I don't think they have to commit to the monthly meetings. They could right. probably yes. come and show up when they can uh, and exactly. keep in touch with you guys. You've been such strong mm -hmm. leaders for the Latino community and I thank you greatly for your work. All right. Thank you and, so much. And we've um, testified before the Board of Education, mm -hmm. so also if they see that there's you know an opportunity to testify, mm -hmm. it's great to have parent voice there. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. Right, and you can also help prep them. Right? Absolutely. That's exactly so I right. think um, what's amazing with you guys is that you have built this um, relationship or there's a comfort level mm -hmm. in parents saying, hey, I need help with this or right. hey, been there and now I want to help somebody else. So again, exactly. thank you so much for your work Absolutely. and for being on the show. And we actually look forward to kind of continuing to expanding opportunities for our students. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about the data mm -hmm. around how many of our students, our Latino students, are mm -hmm. accessing mm -hmm. accelerated and enriched opportunities. Great. Um, how do we make sure that our families know that there are opportunities to be enrolled in high school right. and college? Right. And so just right. looking at what are those opportunities that we can open doors yeah. for our students to really be more engaged and accessing mm -hmm. 
what really is available to them. Good. So as you continue working with the school system, I'm sure more ideas are going to bubble up and exactly. then, you know, That's we'll right. have to work together to figure out how to get that information out to the parents Absolutely. in an effective way. That's right. Again, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank okay, you. thank you. And thank you for watching. I'm Elaine Chang-Baxter, the Director of Partnerships. Join us next time on FYI.